what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it and today we will discuss another very important concept it is based on the placement of planets in kendra to each other not in the kendra it is in kendra to each other okay and in the next video we will discuss on planets in trikonas from each other not in planets that are within the trikonas but planets which are in trikona to each other yes if you are new to the channel once again then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and have a look at my other videos and the bhagavad gita series which i have started the playlist it will be there in the channel please go and have a look and if you have any questions queries or comments related to this video or any other video then please let me know yes your comments your suggestions your opinion is very valuable to me and by that i know what is the flavor of all of you yes now what is the meaning of kendra the kendra refers to the angular houses as in hindi we say kendra sarkar which means the central government the most powerful authority yes and the kendra in astrology are the first house fourth house the seventh house and the tenth house yes kendra are known as the physical existence of a person yes kendra basically means vishnu sthan vishnu sthan means vishnu is the purush yes purush and trikona is lakshmi sthan trikona refers to uh, the places where goddess lakshmi resides they are feminine houses feminine doesn't mean they are only good for females we will discuss what is masculine and feminine later masculine energy here when we say kendra which refers to vishnu sthan that is why whenever there is kendra and trikon we always say as vishnu lakshmi as lakshmi narayan yes and that is what uh, that those are the houses which have only auspiciousness in the chart for example the first fourth seventh tenth and fifth and ninth houses are known as nasargik shubhasthan means they are natural auspicious yes they are ever benefic houses benefic doesn't mean they do not give any difficulties but basically what does the kendra mean kendra means the four pillars of of our life yes four pillars means the first house represents our body our health our physical existence our appearance our intellect because first house is the direction where jupiter mercury obtains its directional strength yes it is the direction of sunrise which is the which is the direction of sunrise yes sun rises in the east okay and seventh house is the west yes where the sun sets now kendra are the four angular houses which means they are the pillar of the horoscope means as i said the first house represents your physical existence if the first house is not there the horoscope doesn't exist <laughs> because the sun is moving yes the lagna is also moving but which house becomes your lagna that will be dependent on the time when you are born the moment you are born it is like a snapshot okay this is the lagna <laughs> the lagna is the most important house in the horoscope which has to be studied and then we have the fourth house which is what our happiness our home our contentment our peace sense of belonging fourth house is the pillar of every horoscope if the fourth house is strong i have seen in my experience many 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 malefic yogas many malefic combinations many difficult placements can also be countered because somehow the person is very happy inside then externally even if there are difficulties outside it doesn't matter so much it will matter externally yes for example if venus is in a difficult situation but if the fourth house is strong the fourth lord is in a good dignity and if there are good planets benefics in the fourth house especially moon or venus because they obtain directional strength there 
then what I have seen is with whatever difficulty they have in marriage or within their career or even health, they somehow don't feel that life is a curse. <laughs> especially if there are planets like Jupiter, especially I have seen. That's the blessing of the fourth house, yes. Fourth house is very important. And that is why it is the house of your mother because your initial comfort in life came from your mother, right? If your mother was not there, I don't know who would take care of you. And then we have the seventh house, which is the house of union, marriage, sexuality, contracts, legal agreements, partnerships. And it is also the house of open enemies, yes. Because it is the second from the sixth house. And it is a very important kendra. The seventh house is a very important kendra because seven, seventh house is directly opposite of the lagna. Opposite does not mean it is against. Opposite simply means it is like a mirror. Seventh house is like a mirror. I am here, then the other party is on that side. So then what happens? Planets in the seventh house can either strengthen the lagna or they can degrade the lagna. They will either bless the lagna or they will either curse the lagna because any planet which sits in the seventh house will always aspect the lagna because all the planets have the parasara's aspect of the seventh house. So if any planet is in the seventh house, it will always aspect. Gradhrishti will always be on the lagna because seventh from the seventh is the lagna itself. That is why 7th house becomes very important. There are other reasons also why 7th house is important. But I will go to them later. And what is the 10th house? 10th house is very important because it shows our impact. 10th house is not work. It is the primary house of karma. Karma and work are a bit different. Car work gen generally it refers to the 6th house. Work is basically what whatever you do in life. Everything comes under 6th house. But 10th house represents... <coughs> those karmas though that level of work which you do to bring change in society yes that is why 10th house is called the house of impact 10th house shows the power in the chart yes that means the kendra are supporting houses because they are like the pillar because you are either alone which is the lagna which means you are single. Single doesn't mean you do not have a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Single means either you are staying alone in a place or you are staying at your home. Yes. Or you are staying with your partner. You have gone to some vacation or something. Or you are in your office working. <laughs> Most of the times you are in four, in these four areas. Well, sometimes you may go to the temple also or visit your father. <laughs> which is your ninth house yes sometimes you may visit your guru sometimes you may go and visit the temple but that doesn't happen every day unless you are a monk you are a celibate monk staying in the temple yes now when i say kendra is very important it means that there are not only one type of kendra yes there are three kendras actually <coughs> why i am saying three because whenever we say Kendra, we only mean Kendra from the Ascendant. Yes, Kendra from the Lagna. Which means we consider the first house, fourth house, seventh house, tenth house from the first house. Which is the same. Yes, first, fourth, seventh, tenth from the first is the first, fourth, seventh and tenth. Now, we also have to consider the second Kendra. Which is the second house. And from there you count four houses the fifth house and from there you count four houses the eighth house and from there you again count four houses that is 11th house yes and the another kendra is from the third house the third house sixth house ninth house and the twelfth house there you see <laughs> so you do not have only one kendra you have three kendras because three into four is twelve and there are total twelve houses in the horoscope that means whenever a planet is in kendra actually a planet is always in kendra <laughs> only it may not be in kendra from the lagna yes for example if suppose mars is in the third house and venus is in the sixth house 
then 3 and 6 are not Kendra houses from the Lagna. Yes, but they are Kendra from each other because 6th house is 4th from the 3rd house. That means whenever we see that Mars is in the 3rd and Venus is in the 6th or 9th or 12th, we can say that Mars and Venus are in Kendra to each other. And if any planet is in Kendra from one planet, then it will the other planet is also in Kendra from, from that planet. For example, as I said, if Mars is in the 3rd, Venus is in the 6th, then Venus is in Kendra from Mars and Mars will also be in the Kendra from Venus because Mars is then in the 10th house from Venus, yes. And what did I say? These houses are the pillar houses. That means whichever planets are there in Kendra to each other, yes, they will have a tendency to push each other. <laughs> what do I mean by pushing? Pushing means they will try to bring physical manifestation of each other's traits into the picture. Does it sound like alien language? Don't worry, I will explain it to you. For example, as I gave this example, Mars in the third house, Venus in the sixth house. Now, although they are not in Kendra from the Lagna, but from the third house, they are in Kendra. Yes, that means Mars and Venus will have a harmonious relationship with each other because they, they have this duty to support each other, to benefit each other. Yes, benefit doesn't mean they will only do good, but when it comes to Venus, Mars and its traits will be very much exerted in terms related to Venus. For example, if this person, now they may say that, okay, Venus in the sixth is not good, but what if Mars is in the third? <laughs> then what happens is, these people, because now Mars is in Kendra from Venus, therefore, whenever it comes to things related to Venus, I'm repeating, whenever it comes to things related to Venus, he will have Mars in the Kendra. Yes, and Mars in Kendra is very strong. That means whenever it comes to things related to Venus, like wife, husband or sexuality or marriage or relationships or luxury, the traits of Mars will be very strong in the person. Now, he may not have those traits of Mars in every area of his life. When it comes to career, he may not be very forceful. But whenever it comes to relationships, suppose he finds out, suppose this is a, uh, let me give you a funny example. Suppose this is a, this is the chart of a woman, a girl who has Mars in the third and she has her Venus in the sixth house. Yes. Now suppose, for example, this girl finds out that there is another girl who is messaging her boyfriend. <laughs> And she's, messaging doesn't mean as a friend, but she's having interest on her boyfriend, suppose, yes. And she gets some suspicion. And this is not the general suspicion which women have. Women are always suspicious. So are men actually. But this is a kind of a very serious suspicion which she's having. That, oh, maybe she's trying to allure him or maybe she's trying to impress him or maybe she's trying to attract him, yes. So if she's having any kind of doubt, any kind of suspicion, then my God, <laughs> she will either blast one of them. She will either blast her boyfriend or she will go and blast the girl because now Mars is in Kendra. So whenever it comes to protecting the relationship or the partner, she will be like a soldier. She will be like the army general. Yes, because Mars and Venus are sustaining each other because Kendra sustains. Yes, Kendra will help each other to grow. So whenever she sees that the relationship is not growing, then she will become very aggressive. She will call the partner and say, come sit here, tell me what's happening. Why this is there, why that is there. Yes, that is the meaning when you say that Mars and Venus are in Kendra to each other. Yes. Now, what if Mars is in the first house itself? Then it is in Kendra from the other Kendras from the Lagna, yes? Then naturally, 
he will be very aggressive mars in kendra means the person is naturally very aggressive because whenever mars sits in kendra it will aspect the other two kendras also because mars aspects the fourth house and the seventh house and the eighth house and if mars is in kendra from the lagna then either ways the fourth house from it is also kendra and the seventh house is also kendra so for example if mars is in the 10th house then mars is aspecting the first house and the fourth house yes and also the fifth house so that means if mars is in the kendra from the lagna and because kendra from the lagna refers to the physical existence the most important houses the person is naturally very brave the person is naturally very headstrong very aggressive very he is kind of a go getter person you tell him anything and he will get it done <laughs> especially if mars is in the 10th house not so great to have mars in the 4th house it's a difficult placement actually but still there will be lots of aggression and traits of violence and brutality in the person in in his general life but if mars is not in kendra from the lagna and if it is in kendra from any other planet suppose mars is in the 5th house yes and venus is in the 2nd house this is another kendra 25811 then the same thing will happen whenever it comes to relationships this person is very headstrong and if he likes a girl if this is a man's horoscope he will go and he will go and pursue the woman ag- aggressively he will try to get her somehow <laughs> and if he comes to know that there are other men who are also behind her he will go and finish them <laughs> either now that will depend on the dignity of mars if mm, um, if mars is a fire sign he may directly go and physically counter uh, the another person who is also trying to get the girl but if mars is in Uh, air sign then he might try to gossip and sp- spread rumors rumors about that person <laughs> and if mars is in a earth sign then he may try to prove that monetary and financially wise status wise he is more powerful yes or if mars is in a difficult dignity in a water sign because mars gets debilitated in cancer so even if mars is in scorpio it is not that great or even pisces because it is like you are putting fire into water so then what the person will do he will try to emotionally manipulate the girl so now you know manipulators <laughs> he will try to say that see you know, i love you he doesn't love you this that somehow something he will do so what if jupiter is in kendra from the planet moon this is known as gajakesri yoga very positive yoga because now jupiter and moon are telling each other that we will help each other's agenda grow yes we will not just sustain we will not just support support is more of a phenomena of the trikon trikon means it will just support it will not try to pull you down the dusthanas will try to pull you down but the difference between kendra and trikon is the trikonas will only support and the kendra will try to uplift it that is why kendras are more prominent than the trikonas because trikonas are positive but they are almost like neutral they are neutral positive they are not very much positive positive means they are good houses but they do not planets in trikonas from each other do not support uh, they they just support they just don't let each other fall but they will not push each other <laughs> but planets in kendra to each other oh my god they will push each other very bad <laughs> and this can lead to competitions and difficulties and struggles also because for example if mars and venus are in kendra to each other then this person will fight for relationships <laughs> what if mars and venus are together why i am giving example of mars venus because it's very graphic it's very easy to understand right so if mars venus are sitting together in any body chart then they are in kendra to each other yes in any house 8th house 9th house 10th house 11th house 12th house any house if mars venus are sitting together then they are in kendra to each other yes then by nature when it comes to venusian things like relationships women the person will be very aggressive yes and what if mars is in kendra from the sun then the person is very much aggressive when it comes to authority when it comes to their position 
when it comes to their status their name their fame their because sun gets directional strength in the 10th house so 10th house is what 10th house is the power the image the thing which people think about you yes that that is what the 10th house 10th house is very important so sun is the significator of the 10th house so if mars is in kendra to the sun yes for example if sun is in the 8th house for example and mars is in the 11th house then they are in kendra to each other so whenever it comes the person may be a very he may be a very neutral person he may be very chilled out very loving caring he may be very soft natured yes but whenever it comes to matters related to the sun this person is very aggressive if you go and tell him that oh you are not doing anything in life you are you don't have a big position you are not in a great post my god then you will see what this person will do <laughs> yes and then similarly as i said jupiter moon if they are in kendra to each other because that then what happens is jupiter is telling i will give my positivity to you so that you improve yes and jupiter's aspect or jupiter's influence to any other planet is considered very good so whichever houses are in kendra from jupiter those are the houses where we have the highest level of positivity the highest level of positivity for example if jupiter is in the fifth house then we are very positive when it comes to matters of the second house eighth house and the eleventh house because fifth house is in kendra from all these three houses yes because now when you make the second house as the ascendant then what happens jupiter goes to the fourth house because fifth house is fourth from the second house yes and then what happens you have this natural benefit jupiter which says i will help you in everything that is why jupiter in the fifth is excellent for money prospects also because whenever it comes to areas of the second house 11th house which are the houses of money yes 211 and 8th house is the house of uh, winning lottery sudden things yes sudden things which happen suddenly you win a lottery somewhere suddenly you get some money somebody calls you and says sir sir uh, we had a lucky draw you won this or or 8th house is the house of inheritance suppose some family member passes away in your home and then he or she uh, gives a lot of money to you in the will so it is considered fabulous for money jupiter in the 5th similarly is jupiter in the 11th or in the 2nd or even in the 8th house yes so whenever it comes to money matters the person is very positive yes positive in the sense the blessings of the gods are there in that in those areas because jupiter will naturally expand that kendra yes and whichever kendra is expanding that kendra will flourish in the person's life naturally so for example now if jupiter venus are in kendra to each other what happens suppose venus is in the 12th house yes and jupiter is in the third house then also they are in kendra to each other so then what happens then whenever it comes to relationships the person is very positive he is very broad minded he or she will outlook uh, will not look he, he or she will ignore the faults of the person faults of the partner he or she will be having this idea that yes because jupiter owns the sign of pisces which is the sign of exaltation of venus which represents being very broad minded being very accommodating yes not trying to change the person which is virgo where venus gets debilitated so the nature of pisces is there in jupiter and also sagittarius which is what dharma duty commitment yes to be fixed to do what is right so if jupiter is in kendra from venus it is considered fabulous for marriage and for things related to venus for example these people will never cheat the other person yes now if jupiter is very badly spoiled in capricorn that's a separate issue <laughs> but if jupiter is even on a neutral dignity or even if it is there even if it is debilitated it will still try to enhance the traits of venus yes these people are extremely creative that is why sometimes we see that 
the house of creativity like uh, the fifth house it doesn't have any benefic planet it doesn't have moon mercury venus jupiter but how come this person is so creative and the fifth lord is also not that great greatly placed well how come is this person so creative <laughs> so now you understand so for example if moon and venus are in kendra to each other then what happens they will enhance each other's agenda yes because their duty is to push each other kendra planets will push each other yes so then what will happen is these people will have the traits of moon which is what to be happy yes and then the traits of venus which is what romance luxury all these things those they will try to push each other so these people will be very much concerned about their uh, about gaining happiness from their relationships if these people are not happy within the relationships because moon represents the manas the way you perceive this world of what is going on in this world that is the moon yes so then these people will not stay in the relationship that is why moon venus conjunction is considered a difficult conjunction although it is a good conjunction in a way that it makes a person very sweet very romantic very much um very lovable but the problem is when they do not find the reciprocation from the partner they will be like yes i can't stay here <laughs> and the same effect comes when moon venus are in kendra to each other yes and now we have the malefic planets why only talk of benefics right and similarly let me talk of mercury also so if jupiter mercury is in kendra yes so it's a very great blessing in terms of money because then uh, whenever it comes to money matters even if the person will lose the job but he will always be hopeful he will always try to expand because jupiter is there in the kendra so jupiter is telling i will push your agenda of mercury which is what money these people are extremely good with friends yes and these people are very good with uh, creative works also creativity means uh, sculpting etc yes uh, decorating the home yes just like venus represents arts creativity media and all this mercury also has importance in creativity yes that is why mercury venus conjunction is very good for creativity now what about malefics <laughs> the villains right <laughs> apparent villains so what if venus and saturn are in kendra to each other yes then what see if venus and saturn are in kendra to each other then the person will have traits of saturn associated with venus at all costs now for example if saturn is in the first house saturn in the first and venus is in the fourth house or the seventh or the tenth house yes then saturn venus are in kendra to each other which means that these people will inevitably face some disappointments some delays in marriage or within their love life or within their romantic life or saturn may force them to tell and show them that look you may not have the most handsome person in this universe yes you may not have the most uh, beautiful girl in the town you might have to settle for somebody who doesn't look that great <laughs> or uh, the family status of the spouse may be a bit less than yours yes and similarly if uh, sun and saturn are in kendra then this shows a very strong tuss between your authority and your subordinates yes so then you might have this tuss this dynamics within sun and saturn even if saturn and mars are in kendra yes then also these dynamics will play then the person on one one side he will want to work very hard patiently on the other side he will be very aggressive very impulsive <laughs> but now since both of them are in kendra to each other for example if saturn is in the 12th house and mars is in the 9th house then you might wonder are they, how come is this person so hard working <laughs> not how come it is because even if the 10th house is empty even if the lagna is empty if all the other planets are in 6th house 8th house 12th house but if saturn and mars are in kendra to each other 
दीज पीपल विल बी हार्ड वर्किंग बिकॉज नाउ दी पर्सन विल ऑल्सो वॉन्ट टू वर्क एंड बी पेशेंट साइमल्टेनियसली विच इज अ ब्यूटिफुल कॉम्बिनेशन टू हैव दिस डेज यस and similarly if moon and mars are in kendra to each other then whenever it comes to his mental areas his home his happiness yes the person is very 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 aggressive and very headstrong you cannot challenge the person you may challenge him in the workplace no not a problem his enemies may beat the hell out of him but whenever it comes to his mother or issues related to property land real estate home or his uh inner chambers which is the fourth house which is moon actually then the person is very headstrong suppose moon is in the eighth house and mars is in the fifth house then these dynamics will play and which other planet is remaining <laughs> so many planets right so what if mercury and mars are in kendra to each other then what happens the person is very headstrong for areas related to money He is very aggressive. If Saturn and Mercury are in Kendra, one of the best placements to have. If you have this, consider yourself lucky. Saturn, Mercury in Kendra to each other, beautiful placement. Unless they are very badly spoiled. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Then what happens is, then these planets, Saturn and Mercury. Saturn is what discipline, duty, commitment, structure, work. Yes. Then we will see that. in terms areas of money which is mercury the saturn's influence will be very prominent in the person yes and in terms of saturn yes we will also see mercury states are also there so basically these people are too much money minded <laughs> so you may wonder that okay uh, there are not many planets in the second house 11th house why is this person so much money minded because saturn is also the miser yes because saturn represents the poverty stricken class which do not have anything so uh, what i have seen in my experience saturn mercury in kendra to each other these people are very miserly <laughs> which in kaliyuga is not that bad maybe <laughs> again it depends on how you see it what what you define as good or bad may be different for somebody else for example saturn mars in kendra is considered to be a very difficult uh, placement but for some people for in, for people who come from the grassroots this is a very good combination because of that combination they will rise in life yes so it depends of what you say as good and what you say as bad for some people what you think is good somebody may say oh but then this person will never have any struggle in life then what will this person learn yes if saturn and mars are not in kendra then what will happen then the person is not very hard working so in a sense if you have the horoscope and if you are a boss if you want to hire somebody suppose you have their horoscope suppose i am saying supposedly then always select a person who has saturn mars in kendra to each other because these people will not only take initiative yes they will also walk patiently with discipline for long time the typical capricorn type <laughs> because saturn owns the sign of capricorn and then you will see that whatever task you give them they will somehow achieve it they will do it somehow rather than selecting a person who has mars in the 10th house which is very good if you want to select a subordinate who has mars in the 10th house that's fabulous that's very good for you but I would personally prefer selecting a person who has Mars and Saturn in Kendra to each other, or at least in Trikon, at least to each other. Then what will happen? If it is in Trikon, they will kind of support. They will be like, okay, we will support each other. But if it is in Kendra, they will push each other, and that is why Kendra sometimes can represent log jam. So see, Kendra is like this. Kendra is like this, right? so it can represent log jam saturn is pushing this side mars is pushing this side but then because of the friction a lot of good things come out <laughs> that is why you cannot give an answer if malefics in kendra to each other are good or they are bad there are tremendous difficulties with mars saturn in kendra to each other but the end result is beautiful especially they are conjunct if they are conjunct then lot of struggles the person has to undergo related to that house or related to that sign which 
uh, in which they are placed yes for example if saturn mars are conjunct in the sign of taurus then related to luxury food whining dining you will have a lot of struggles in life <laughs> but you will ultimately make it and similarly if rahu is in kendra from any planet then what happens you have to use certain things related to rahu to fulfill the agenda of that planet should i repeat <laughs> you will have to use rahu to fulfill the agenda of that planet should i give an example why not for example if jupiter is in kendra from rahu then it is better that we go and get knowledge about spirituality from a guru who is in foreign lands or who is of a different origin than ours i do not mean that if you are a hindu you should go and learn hinduism from or you should go and learn islam from a muslim guru i am not saying that guru or whatever you call their uh, teachers but i am simply saying suppose you are a hindu and you have this combination hindu doesn't mean the hindu of today but i am saying if you are a follower a person follower of a vedic tradition then if you have this placement if jupiter rahu is in kendra from each other for example if jupiter is in the third and rahu is in the 12th house then they will only support each other now they, they will push each other because kendra is pushing right but they will push each other if you satisfy both of them for example if you uh, find a guru who is a foreigner yes who is of a different origin then you go and learn from them you will have the highest level of spiritual perfection by that instead of going and learning from a guru who is very traditional yes or the same traditional knowledge you can learn but from a guru who is of foreign origin yes and similarly if <coughs> venus and rahu are in kendra to each other then i would recommend these people from my experience that whenever it comes to marriage it is good if you can marry somebody of a different caste different creed different religion yes because then your marriage will be fine of course marriage doesn't become fine by marrying a person of a different religion just because if you have rahu in the kendra houses from venus but it simply means that if you do that then rahu will support will push the agenda of venus which is marriage because now how the marriage will be ultimately that depends on so many other factors that depends on a whole lot of things yes we have to see the seventh house seventh lord and so many other things that we have to see but it is very important when we consider rahu's placement in the kendra and now very important what if ketu is placed in kendra from any planet then what we should do is whenever it comes to the areas of those planets which are in kendra from ketu suppose ketu is in the 9th house then if we have any planet in 3 6 or 12 yes then we will only be able to achieve fulfillment in those areas in planets in the 3rd 6th and 12th houses if we practice spirituality if we remain be detached for example suppose if ketu is in the 9th and venus is in the 6th 3rd or 12th house then if we try to be attached to the partner if we try to get too much obsessed if we cannot let go of the partner my god you will have the time of your life i am saying you will be the most miserable person because now ketu will push venus <laughs> or best is if you take to spirituality and you have regular spiritual uh, practices which you do along with your spouse for example every morning you can do some meditation some mantra you can uh, chant you, in the evening you can do some bhajan in the uh, you can do some charity in the weekends you can go and visit temples go to satsang go to different places yes if jupiter ketu are in kendra then also especially for children it is very important that you do otherwise it will not happen if sun and ketu are in kendra you just do spiritual practice and your career will shoot up i am telling you and especially mercury is also there in kendra from ketu so whichever houses are in kendra from ketu spirituality becomes very important to enliven those houses yes and if sun is in kendra then the person is very much 
focused in working related to those areas now sun cannot be in kendra in the fourth seventh or tenth from mercury venus because they can be at max three houses apart but they can be conjunct yes so if sun is in kendra from jupiter especially then what is jupiter jupiter is your morals your ideals your um, your ability to decide what will give you higher fulfillment your ability to know what is right what is wrong and see the broad picture jupiter is like the bird's eye view mercury is the one who is roaming in the streets finding okay what is here what is there <laughs> so when it comes to areas related to jupiter the sun is there in kendra so the person will be very strict the person will be very fixed so it it, it, it is it is it can be a good or a bad combination also depends on the dignity of jupiter and sun for example if suppose jupiter is exalted in cancer and sun is also in aries and cancer and aries are in kendra to each other yes because cancer is the fourth house and aries is the first house then my god these people once they take to some spiritual path that's it they are never going to leave it i have seen this with people time and again if jupiter and sun are in kendra to each other yes they are always very hopeful very positive about their spiritual path because now sun which is the significator of light and sun is also spirituality yes and these people also have a very good positive self esteem about themselves because not only sun is throwing light to jupiter jupiter is also giving positivity to the sun which is what ego ego not necessarily arrogance but what you think of yourself what what do you believe that you can do what are the things that you think you can achieve in this life all these things are represented by the planet sun so all these things will also be there yes similarly if uh, what else is remaining everything everything i discussed maybe yes and moon and saturn if they are in kendra so then it is very important that we uh do meditation things etc because otherwise things can go haywire <laughs> because then whatever we get in life we may always feel that something is lacking because saturn is the significator of deprivation so if moon and saturn are in kendra whatever comes you will always feel no it is not good somehow we will lack satisfaction so you have to do practices of saturn especially in saturday or when moon is transiting pushya anuradha or uttar bhadra and you have to do mantras related to shani maharaj and so many other practices helping the poor giving donations on saturday yes and then chanting mantras yes so many other remedies related to saturn you should do and now saturn will be in kendra from some house yes because saturn will be placed somewhere and there will be planets in kendra from saturn right so for example saturn is placed in the 7th house and if venus is in the 1st or 4th or 7th or 10th then they are in kendra so irrespective of wherever saturn is you will always have some houses in kendra even if they are not having planets still the houses are in kendra to each other and they will also have the effects that is why saturn in the 2nd 5th 8th and 11th these people have to work very hard for money why because 2 5 8 11 are all the houses of money and when saturn is in either of them it is in kendra from the other houses so for earning money you have to persevere you have to be very patient you have to work very hard otherwise you will not get money <laughs> yes even if there are no planets even if suppose your saturn is in the 11th house and there are no planets in the second fifth eighth house or saturn is also not conjunct with anybody still you will have to work very hard because otherwise the kendras from saturn are not getting supported they are not getting pushed so to push the traits of the second fifth eighth houses if saturn is in the 11th you have to use the traits of saturn so there you go you have to always work hard irrespective of wherever saturn is so some people say that okay saturn if it is in first fourth seven tenth you have to work very hard no it's not like that saturn will always be placed somewhere yes that means you always have to work hard in life there is no substitute to hard work there is no substitute for uh, perseverance tolerance tenacity all these traits yes 
very long video that is it from my side if you have any questions queries or comments related to placement of planets in kendra to each other then please let me know in the comment section and if you have not subscribed to the channel then subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up oh and yeah yes one more thing some people are telling me that they are not getting the updates when i upload video so please click the notification bell in the in my youtube channel page then you will get a mail as soon as i upload the videos okay and if you are interested in doing some donation for the sustenance of the channel then the link to paypal is there in the comments you can go and donate some money or else look at my bhagavad gita series that's it from my side signing off hope that you understand the meaning of planets in kendra to each other okay until next time wish you great luck good night see you